All right, guys, I did not get a chance to video anything until now. First session just happened, and then we got Tandy inspecting the car. What do you think, bud? All good? Okay. So it's my first time here, definitely very, uh, very interesting. Um, I did a 38.2, which is, I wanted to get into the 30s. It looked like the local guys races earlier this year were doing mid 30s, like 36s, I think. Um, so first session out, uh, car felt good, everything felt good. Um, oh, one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna take the canards off of it because the, the way this track is, the most important turn is the keyhole, which is like, I don't know, 50 mile an hour turn headed to a really long straightaway. So in a weird way, I'm gonna take arrow off the car to make it a more raceable car. Otherwise I would just get destroyed on that back straight. There are parts in this track where arrow will definitely help, but you can't really pass there. So this is one of those calls I need to make now to kind of set the car up for what I think will be best in the race. So I'm gonna pull those off, take maybe only a degree of wing out um, and get ready for session two. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Okay, so run two is done. I'm happy with how everything went. Um, as you can see, I took the canards off of the front. Hey, Brian. Um, and trimmed the wing out a little bit. I filled it up with gas, so I was a little bit heavier. Um, but again, um, I'm learning the track, so it's not like de-arrowing the car. I picked up four seconds. I ended up doing a 34, what did I do? 34, six? Three. Oh, Thir no, yes. So I went from a 38.2 to a 34.6, but that's just me kind of learning the track. It's getting a little warmer, stuff like that. So um, yeah, so I downloaded the data already. And pretty much what I was looking at was GPS uh, speed maxes. The first run and somewhere around here, right around that 15 mile an hour or whatever. So as you can see, uh, 33, 32, 28, 33, 34, uh, I think was my best. And then the afternoon with the car trimmed out, 34, 37, 36, 36. So, yeah, so you can see I picked up a few mile an hour. Um, what I'm trying to do is set the car up basically to either defend into turn four or get a run on somebody into turn four. Because even though the rest of the track, arrow will kind of help you, it's really hard to pass in the back, uh, you know, through the S's, through Thunder Valley. Um, the carousel maybe, it's almost like turn one, the keyhole, or turn four, the passing spots, which are just long straights, you know? So that's kind of my theory there about trying to trim the car out. So yeah, uh, and then on top of that, I, 
so this is my dyno from earlier this year so there's my averages um, so I could be as light as 2,900 pounds I rolled across that 3,018 with about 10 and a half gallons in the tank so at the end of a 45 minute race if I'm on fumes I'll be 2,955 so so according to those numbers I'm good by 50 pounds or so um, the thing is, this dyno might read a little high or a little low. Low is fine, but if it reads a little high, I might have to put some weight in it. Um, unfortunately, all the dyno slots are already taken up, so I might throw some weight in it just to be safe. Um, where's I going with this? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, the first time I go across scales will be after it actually counts. Um, so hopefully I don't run into something like... Uh, the Watkins Glen issue, uh, Coda was a little funny last year with them not being able to get RPM signals in some cars, but anyway, so um, it's still practice day, so got time to figure everything out. Alright, so car felt awesome after the fourth session. Um, so what I did was I actually put... I put two more lead bricks in it, so that's a 35 and like a 20. So I put about another 55 pounds in it, and I just filled it up with gas, so I'm going out extra heavy, just to see you know, what the car feels like, because uh, I won't have a chance to go over the dyno before it counts. So that way, you know, I'm, I, I should be extra safe. So we'll see what happens after this session. So that's it for today. Uh, right before I went out, I took a peek at my brake pads because I did four 20 minute sessions. So that's a long time to be running. And this is what I found. So you can see there's pretty much nothing left. There's a tiny bit of fade to the pad. Um, so it's a good thing I peeked at it. Uh, I was able to get a new set of pads on the front and out in like 10 minutes so I didn't miss the session. Uh, with the full fuel load and extra weight, the car was still good. I did a 35.3. Um, I did have a lap that was up like six tenths on that or something, um, but ended up catching traffic and then just kind of figured, all right, you know, car felt fine, let me bring it in. So that's about it. Uh, gonna go over the brakes, check a few things. We got a meeting in a little bit and you know, that's that's kind of about it for today. Tomorrow is a kind of like a warm-up practice and then two individual qualifying sessions. So we'll see um, we'll see how they go. All right, so it's the beginning of day two. Um, unfortunately, I didn't go out for morning practice because I didn't think I had to um, or you know felt that I needed to. Uh, somewhere in the supplemental rules it was written that uh, the grid for qualifying, is based off of this morning's practice times. So I'm literally behind everybody, which kind of stinks because I was quickest 
of the class all day yesterday. So that's gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, hopefully I'm like last, last one out or near the back and just kind of give myself a gap and try and get that one run early. Uh, but otherwise we'll kind of see what happens. I think that's it. All right guys, super stoked. I just rolled across scales at 3,088, uh, which is easily the heaviest this car's ever been. So even if the dyno reads a little high, I should be fine. Um, I think I had about a half second on second place. So happy with that for sure. Um, yeah, we're lined up for the dyno right now. And then we do have a afternoon qualifying. Uh, conditions might get worse, but you know, just in case anything happens, I got a second shot at it. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Sweaty, tired. <laughs> Alright guys, it is Saturday morning. Uh, I'm starting from pole on this one. Um, didn't really do much to the car, went over the brakes. Um, the the one caliper bolt felt a little funny going in, so that kind of sucks that it's in the back of my head that the one bolt, one of the bolts holding the caliper on is like pretty tight, but not, it, 
it almost felt like it was going to strip out, so I kind of stopped. <laughs> so, anyways, I guess I'll just feel that out. Um, I added another 31 pound brick because uh, I did the math with the dyno, and I was fine after qualifying full on fuel. But after a 45 minute race, as light as I'll be, burning off all that fuel, I kind of want a little bit extra leeway. So, I think that's about it. Are you taking your license plate off? <laughs> Yeah, I've been meaning to do it the whole time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm ready to go for the qualifying race. Kind of, like I said, it kind of sucks that, you know, I'm not 100% confident in the brake setup. Uh, I'll know by lap one or two, I guess. Uh, like I said, it's pretty tight, but it just had a weird feeling to it. So, that kind of sucks. Um, I think that's it. Kind of like overcast sky, so it's pretty cool out. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how this race shakes out. Yeah, so the qualifying race went good. There was a little bit of a yellow in the middle there, which helped me out um, because the dyno ran red high and I was legal by two pounds of torque. So, or you can look at it as like, I was legal by, what's that, 18 pounds, 20 pounds about. Um, so cutting it super close. The problem is the championship race is an extra 15 minutes. So I'm gonna burn through more gas, especially if it's green the whole time. So I put my last 26 pound lead brick in it. Um, and then, yeah, it, it's a little bit warmer today because, so here's, um, so Friday, you know, I was doing three, or I'm sorry, my Friday numbers are here. I averaged out to 352. Saturday, it was a little bit cooler. Uh, where is it? Averaged out to, I think it was like 362. So, you know, I picked up 10 pounds of torque, which is, almost 100 pounds difference. Um, so like I said, I put my last brick in it, um, just kind of double checked everything. And, you know, hopefully, I kind of hope there's a yellow in the middle at, you know, hopefully it's at an opportune time, but you know, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, am I missing anything? <laughs> yellow, weight's gonna be close. I know it's gonna be close. Hopefully the dyno reads a little bit more like Friday's dyno than Saturday's. Uh, it's warm like it was on Friday, so, you know, I it should help me out. Tandy's cooking. Airing out, bud. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Um, you know, we're just watching some of the other races this morning. And I think car's good to go. I gotta wipe it down. Windy as shit today, and there's dust everywhere on it. Um, but that's about it, so, yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, see you guys in the race.
All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do right now is put a tag right up here to the full race. I'm not gonna make you sit through all 45 minutes of it. Um, I will say it was a fun race. Um, I did set fast lap. I got the lap record at mid-Ohio now. Um, traffic hurt me in some spots, maybe helped me a little bit in others. Um, yeah, very interesting race for sure. When you watch it, towards the very end, you'll see me get a really good run on the orange Mustang, but I kind of had to give a lift because there was a car off the driver's right. It was definitely my best chance to pass during the race. I had, I had some other chances and everything, um, but that car was very quick in a straight line, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, yeah, I guess it was, it was still a fun race. Clean race, you know, don't have to fix my car or anything. Um, like I mentioned, got the lap record, uh, fastest lap of the race. So my car was quick, um, you know, it performed awesome. So, you know, Maximum Motorsports uh, suspension, all of our aerodynamic stuff, obviously. Um, Wicked Motorsports uh, gave us a good solid tune on it. Um, so yeah, I leave the track, you know, thinking, all right, I got second place and I was, I was alright with second place. About an hour into our trip home, Kelly and I are eating at a Denny's and I get a phone call from the race director to let me know that I won. So I was kind of surprised by this and as it turns out, the orange car had a switch hidden within driver's reach that allowed him to put the car into a different tune to make more horsepower on track so when he came off track he could just turn it down when he would roll across the dyno the car would dyno legal the issue was given his weight and horsepower and the fact that we were both black boxed we made almost identical horsepower yet he was about an extra 400 pounds and if you watch the video you can see how much he would gap me and honestly, at the time, in the race, I didn't really think much of it, you know? Because um, I'm usually a little bit slower in a straight line because I have more aerodynamic bits on my car. But the fact that I took the canards off, trimmed the wing out, did a few other tricks to kind of make it, you know, slipperier. And he was still just gapping me. It's, you know, looking at it now, it's like, okay, it kind of makes sense a little bit. So it's kind of a crappy way to win nationals I'll put it that way you know cheating it sucks this was it's not like the dino red a little bit high and he was he was light on weight or something like that and this was blatant cheating so you know that really sucks when that stuff kind of happens uh, not just for the guy who gets caught me Jeff who finished third is now second you know um, Bruce, who now gets bumped up to third, pretty much everybody. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, you know, it, it was, like I said, it was still a good weekend. I was top of the timesheets, I think literally every session, including practices. So, yeah, good learning experience as always. Fun weekend. Uh, we got to do a few other things while we were out there. If you're ever at Mid Ohio, where they filmed Shawshank Redemption, is I don't know, 20 minutes away. Do you want to be in the video? Tandy's, Tandy's older sister. So, anyways, yeah, it's kind of like a crappy way to uh, win nationals. Um, you know, I'm putting a ton of ballast in my car to make sure I'm legit, and then this guy just, you know, gets to turn a little switch to, to make more power. I definitely have to thank the race directors, Al Watson and Al Hernandez. Um, like I mentioned, um, we were black boxed, um, and the guys at AIM who looked at the data were the first ones to kind of say, you know, based on his power and weight and the data, something's not adding up. You should probably look at that car. Um, and I got to apologize. I don't know his name, but the guy who was running dinos all weekend to make sure everybody was doing the dino procedure legally, um, or correctly was actually the one who crawled up under the car to look 
backwards up the column to, to find the switch. So, you know, thanks to those guys for putting in the time and effort and everything to, you know, keep us all in check and in line, if you will. Yeah, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit now. Definitely, um, you know, happy with how I performed and how the car performed for sure. And I think that's about it for this one. So coming up in a little bit, we'll be at Watkins Glen. No real updates or anything. Um, so the next video will most likely be a race update from there. So as always, thanks for hanging out. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with future videos, future updates, all that stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one.